Hey guys, Reed here on behalf of Enterprise DNA. Today we're going to talk about some considerations related to the calendar table. And more specifically, I'm going to dive a little bit into some ideas around what data types are actually best to be set when displaying certain things on various visual axes, especially when it comes to the month and year type of column that you might have in your calendar table and how that actually displays when that is a date data type versus the text data type. And one, as you will see, actually displays a lot better when you have a lot of unique month and years or categories on that X axis. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. So we'll start by looking at the problem that I've seen a lot of people experience when they create custom columns. So I'm gonna come up to my calendar table and very often I see a column like this at the month or the month and year level where what they do is they actually format the calendar date field to have MMM, which is month short and four Ys, which accounts for the year and what that looks like if I use this visual here to move down from quarter year to month and year, we have an axis like this where it does display well and it's compact. It keeps all of the longer and shorter month names down to just three letters, which I do approve of. However, one of the issues that we can see here is the fact that it displays it for every category. And because it's a text field, if I come to the format painter, go to the X axis, I do not have any option in here to change it to a contiguous axis. So I have to display every single category in here because I'm going up to this option in here for the month and year text. It is a text field with a text data type. So there's no way for it to be continuous because the model does not understand this as a date field type. Now we're going to come to date data type here. I'm going to select this visual. Now again, we're at the quarter and year level. Now let's go ahead and go down a level. Now notice that I have a column in here called month and year. That does not mean it is month and year text. It is in fact month and year as a date data type. So we're gonna move down. Look at this nice clean axis that I have. So each of these is a specific month and year formatted in here. Now one thing I actually did miss that I wanna make sure of is if I select that, notice that I have it converted to a date data type. Now there are a few ways to write this measure. You can either combine it like this. You can also instead use something like start of month and then do off of the date field in the calendar table here. Any of these can work. And then what you do is you set it to date data type and then the formatting, so we can get that tool to display better. We'll go ahead and set that as the month and year level here. There we go. Now let's hover again to see that. There we go. So we still have the month and year level, but because it is a date data type, if I come over to the format pane or the X axis, Notice that I have a setting under type for continuous or categorical. There's my categorical, there is my continuous. Notice how much cleaner the axis is here because it knows your logic can fill in the gaps into here. So it's my recommendation when you are wanting to display month and year data at this level, that that's the level to include it in at. Another mention that I wanna bring into here is I generally like my axis to be all inclusive. So each level has the full context of all of the levels that are needed to have it be a unique identifier. So as an example, at the year level, it is year. If I go down to just the next level here, which is quarter and year combined, it is able to show that for all periods because I have concatenated together the quarter and the year into this. Same thing with month and year. So it displays a lot cleaner as opposed, in this case, let's go to the noisy axis tab. Here's more of a traditional example where you just have year, quarter by itself, and month by itself. So at the top level, if I just simply move down to the next, I have a quarter for each of the Q1 through Q4s, but it now obviously is adding those up for all years. And same thing at the month level. So I'm not a huge fan of this one. The only way to get the full year quarter month context is you have to expand, but then watch how noisy that axis becomes. So I don't really like this one either. I really do prefer, I really do prefer the self-contained. And as you have observed now, even in that self-contained scenario, there's a couple ways to optimize versus making sure that at least at one of the levels that it is set to a date data type and that can be done for the quarter itself. So that's why I like to have this as the year here that is usually set as a whole number quarter year because it is a concatenated kind of custom string that will unfortunately be text and it still displays well but normally you don't have that many unique values in the quarter level. By the time you get to the month level though that continuous axis really does come into play. So overall, I hope this gives you a little bit of education on some ways to design the calendar table. And you can see that not all column data types, especially with calendar fields, are created equal. So hopefully this is something you can implement and use in your reports. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV.
If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.